여러분 안녕하세요. 어, 지니TV입니다. 제가 그동안은 저 유튜브에 목소리로만 여러분 만났는데요. 오늘은 처음으로 여러분께 제 얼굴을 공개하게 됐습니다. 어, 그렇게 된 이유는 오늘 여러분께 아주 특별한 손님을 모시고 어, 음악에 대해서 얘기를 나눠보려고 합니다. 오늘 이 자리에 모신 손님은 어, 체코 문화원의 원장이신 아, 미샤 이마노프스키 맞아요. 네. 에마노프스키 에마노프스키 어, 선생님 모셨는데요. 어, 제가 저번에 그 하벨 프로젝트에서 그 녹음을 할때 제가 특별히 그 체코 작곡가의 음악에 대해서 이제 소개를 해달라고 말씀을 드렸습니다. 그래서 오늘 이렇게 특별히 저희 집에 오셔가지고 체코 음악에 대해서 소개를 해주시려고 합니다. 여기서 잠깐 미샤 에마노브스키 원장님의 프로필을 소개해드리겠습니다. 트럼펫 연주자인 아버지와 바네이스틴 어머니의 영향으로 어린 시절부터 전문적인 음악 교육을 받았습니다. 체코 야나 체크 음악원 재학 중에 파운데이션 포러 시빌 소사이어티 장학생으로 선발되어 미국으로 건너갔습니다. 미국에서는 캘리포니아 아이들 와일드 아트 아카데미 커티스 음악원에서 공부했고 줄리어드 음악원에서 석사 학위를 받았습니다. 그동안 세계 여러 나라를 무대로 연주 활동을 해왔으며 2006년부터 2021년까지는 서울시립교향악단의 혼 부수석으로 활동했습니다. 그리고 올해 1월 주한 체코 문화원 원장으로 취임하셨습니다. I would like to thank you for willingly taking the time for my YouTube channel, Gini TV. I asked you to introduce a few Czech composers' music. And uh, I have a list of music you recommended. The first piece is Sharka. It is the third piece of a set of six symphony poems titled My Country by Smetana. Each poem depicts an aspect of Bohemia's countryside, history, or legend. As you know, the most famous in this work is the second piece, Moldau. Shaka is said and performed outside the set of my country, but you choose Shaka. Mm -hmm. Is there any special reason? Yeah. Uh, Moldau, as you said, is the most popular, Voltava. Mm -hmm. But Sharka has the most amount of energy mm -hmm. powerful story mm -hmm. um it's very easy to follow the storyline with music mm -hmm. if we are hearing it right now i can imagine all the instruments i can imagine all the action that happens in charka i think it's a great piece for both the listener and the performer uh -huh. when we when i played it i had a really great time and uh these days especially in korea we see kind of a fight between men and women yes and uh, this is definitely one that applies to this. This struggle has been here for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. maybe thousands of years. And these battles have gone on back and forth. And this is a literal battle between men and women. I think it's very interesting. Uh, in classical music, women are usually kidnapped or in danger of being killed by men. Uh, for example, Shehrazada in Rimsky Korsakov's orchestral music and Ludmila in Glinka's opera. On the contrary, Sharka deceived the men and then killed them all. So she has a very wild character. Right. And uh, how was Sharka's wild character portrayed in music? Um, are there some instruments that correspond to the characters? Okay, mm -hmm. I will start by mentioning a little bit about the story yeah, of yes, Sharka. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, no, I missed it. No, no, that's okay. Um, there is a very old book, uh, mm -hmm. Cosmas Chronicle, mm -hmm. that was written in the 12th century, a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. And that's the first mention of so-called Maiden's War, the mm -hmm. women's war mm -hmm. against war, men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the legend has changed over the time, mm -hmm. and Smetana adopted just a small part of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, in this case, Sharka is a young maiden. Mm -hmm. The leader of the group, Vlasta, tells her, we're going to set you up as bait for the men. Stirat, a very difficult name uh, to pronounce. It's very hard to pronounce. <laughs> Stirat. Stirat. And his men, they ride through the forest on mm -hmm. their horses. Now, if we're listening to the music right now, I hope you can match this to the music. Uh -huh. But you can hear the horses. Ta -ta 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 uh -huh. 
they're riding through the forest. You can hear the horn hunting, mm -hmm. super exciting. And then all of a sudden a clarinet comes in mm -hmm. and that is Sharka. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily wild music. It's, I feel it's pleading ah. and please help me. She's tied to a tree mm -hmm. and uh, Tstirat sees this beautiful woman and says, mm -hmm. oh, what happened to you? And she said, you know, I have been abused by the other women and I've been tied here mm -hmm. uh, to the tree because I haven't agreed with them. Mm -hmm. And he says, okay, well, let me save you. And as part of the jolliness, the merriment, they start drinking. Mm -hmm. And here again, you can hear the music. You hear that in the music and they're drinking beer. And then gradually the music is kind of calming okay. down. It's Calm going down. down. Uh, the harmony starts changing. Fall and asleep. The, they're falling asleep, <laughs> right? And then the bassoon enters and it's just a sustain note. Uh -huh. That's like snoring right there. They're mm. snoring. Ah, snoring. <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden you hear a horn. And that mm. is the signal that mm. in the original tale, I think, Stirat makes the sound. Mm. In Smetana's version, Sharka plays the horn. And you have ba bam <laughs> And then from far away, you hear another horn answers mm -hmm. and that is the third horn with a mute mm -hmm. that is the signal for the other women to come in I mean, uh, uh, because the, everybody's asleep and then a wild music breaks out and all of the women not just Sharka mm -hmm. but the other women come running in and they slaughter all the men <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm laughing. It's uh, they they kill them all, and then you have this victorious trombone fanfare. <laughs> they are victorious, and it just ends. I mean, this kind of music, you, as a listener, if you feel the story and you hear it. It really comes alive. And for that reason, it's maybe more picturesque than Vltava. Mm -hmm. You can really hear the events that happen in there. So that's the story. I, I find it particularly exciting. And that's why I picked it as the first piece. The another Czech composer, the Jana Czech, the right. very, very famous uh, composer. Mm -hmm. I know you were born in the same place as Jana Czech. What kind of emotional familiarity do you feel in his music as a native of the same hometown? Right. So my mother has played a violin for 40 years in the Janáček Philharmonic Orchestra of Ostrava. Uh, uh, Ostrava? Ostrava is the big city. City. Uh, Hukvaldi is technically where he was born, but is very near Ostrava. Uh, Hukvaldi. Hukvaldi. Uh, yes, Janáček <laughs> was born there. Uh, Hukvaldi? Yes, uh -huh, but we right. kind of say Ostrava because it's a small town, very uh, Ost village, I should say, mm -hmm. near Ostrava. Mm -hmm. Very picturesque. Imagine mm -hmm. mountains mm -hmm. and a beautiful, um, beautiful forests. Mm -hmm. So where, that's where he was born. But he left quite early on for Brno. Brno is the second largest city in the Czech Republic. Uh, Brno. In Brno, uh, he spent most of his life. He composed majority of his works uh -huh. there. And towards the end of his life, he moved back into Hukvaldi, oh, into his right. uh, place. He bought the house, he bought some land. Mm -hmm. So you should know there's a big rivalry between Brno and Ostrava over Janáček's legacy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in Ostrava, we have the Janáček Conservatory, mm -hmm. where I attended for three years. Uh -huh. And we have the Janáček Philharmonic, mm -hmm. but Brno has the Janáček Academy of Music uh -huh. and the Janáček Theater. And uh -huh. we always say, oh, no, he's more belong to Ostrava or uh -huh. he more belongs to Brno. Mm -hmm. I think Brno is really the answer. But mm -hmm. we like to uh, take him uh, for us. Mm -hmm. For me, I was surrounded by Anna Czech's music. The language of the music is quite natural for me. Uh 
uh-huh. uh, because you're used to listening to it. Right. Um, and maybe for Korean listeners, it's not so familiar because they're used to Dvořák, Smetana. Mm-hmm. Very uh, f- phrases are very long. It's melodic. Um, Bianacek's music is a little bit more abrupt, I would say. Abrupt? Abrupt, uh, mm-hmm. like uh, piercing. Uh-huh. Um, and something that we might talk about later is how it's related to mm-hmm. the language. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh- you said Janacek's Taras Buba might be a fantastic introduction to the world of Janacek's music. I know Janacek developed and applied the concept of speech tunes to build a unique musical and dramatic style. His musical assimilation of rhythm, pitch canto, and inflection of normal Czech speech have created very distinctive music. Would you please explain how he applied speech tunes to his music? Right. So Janacek is famous for following everyday people's language. Yes. He made maybe over 1000 recordings of how people speak. Yes, I know. <laughs> and have you seen the little um, sketches? Mm-hmm. So somebody says something, Podej mi to prosím vás. Uh-huh. And then he would Inflection. kind of <laughs> melody up and down with the rhythm. Mm-hmm. And you can definitely hear that in the music. Mm-hmm. So when you are listening to Janacek's music for the first time, mm-hmm. I would not hear it as far as phrasing, uh, follow it as, as language uh, more. It's, I think it has strong relation to language, language. itself. Uh, In it, Taras Bulba. Uh, it is yes. it, uh, instrumental music, not vocal music. Yes, uh, but you can hear the speech in there. Uh-huh. And I feel it's quite percussive. I think percussion instruments are used often. Mm-hmm. Uh, In Taras Bulba, there's this uh, four hits by the cymbals. Chuchu, chuchu. Uh-huh. Have you heard it in the piece? Yes. That I think you can just say taras bulba. Ah. It's it's really related. And oh. when when I played in uh, in a philharmonic, I quite often put text when I'm playing music. I kind of put texts. Unfortunately, I don't know Czech, so I'm sorry that I can't fully enjoy his music. <laughs> well, let me let me say the, uh, one of the most uh, famous sentences in the Czech language uh, is strč prskrskrk. <laughs> <laughs> and any Czech person will know it's uh, kind of a tongue twister. Uh, and this sentence doesn't have any vowels. Mm-hmm. There's no E's, A's, I's. It's all S T R C P R S T. So you can hear the language is quite short and abrupt. Mm. Right? I feel in Janacek that's that's there, but at the same time you have this beautiful lyr- lyrical side. Mm. And in Taras Bulba, the first movement, the uh, death of Andre, mm. you hear a beautiful violin solo, yeah. which is the love interest. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, maybe just a little bit about the story. This is based on yeah, Go- yes, Gogol's yes. book. Oh, Gogol's uh, novel. Novel. Uh, and the three movements are, are all dealing all with the death. Death, uh, right? So Andre. Sons- Andre betrays okay. uh, the cause. Oh, yes. He falls in love with a Polish woman mm-hmm. that's the enemy. So she is the violin solo and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Then he is killed by his own father for the betrayal. Taras yes. is his father. The second one is Ostap, the other son. Other son. Uh, and he old, is captured. Uh, yes. Okay. He's another. He's captured mm-hmm. and he is killed by the Polish side. Mm-hmm. And then Taras' death is, I think, in battle. Mm-hmm. So we have this. But people shouldn't be scared. The music is not about just dying. There's also a lot of just gorgeous moments mm-hmm. for me. Uh, Janacek, he loved women. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know uh, that when he was very, very, very old, yes. uh, he fell in love with a married woman. Yes. Uh, I, I, I can't remember. Camilla. Yes. <laughs> so this tender side comes through. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I heard he was a very um, strict man. Mm-hmm. and people were a little bit afraid of him mm-hmm. but all of these people they can still show love through music mm-hmm. and it's definitely in there mm-hmm.